All right. We're out here at the garage. I'm doing a bunch of work on these bikes, trying to get, get them together and reliable for this riding season. It's beautiful enough today as well as yesterday that could be riding. I've got my bike torn apart pretty, pretty good. Of course, I'm talking about my uh, my twin cam uh, soft tail chopper, that Paul Yaffe frame and stuff. You know, um, I have mixed. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a love, not hate, but I do love the motorcycle. I'll probably keep it forever. I think it's very cool, uh, and that's one of the factors why why I want to keep it but the other factor is that every motorcycle I've ever had that I got rid of I always regretted it I was never glad to get rid of any of them sometimes you got to do what you got to do but uh, it is shaping up that this this uh, riding season I will have another motorcycle up which is going to be an older school bike you know because the biggest complaint for me with this is I don't I'm not nuts about the soft tail chopper thing although it is very much my opinion that the Paul Yaffe soft tail chopper frame uh, is superior and it's the best looking soft tail chopper frame it stands the way it sits it's the best looking thing out there and uh, those types of uh, suspensions, but um, that's my opinion. You can have your own opinion. Um, but I'm not nuts about soft tails, period. And I'm not nuts about soft tail choppers, anyway, put it that way. And I'm not nuts about twin cam motors. I'm definitely not nuts about Milwaukee 8 motors either. I, uh, although they, some of them can be very, very fast. Um, yeah, I do a little things to them, but not much, not much at all. But I'm more of an older school guy. I prefer pan heads and shovel heads, generator shovels, cone shovels, you know, but uh, pan head motors, love them. So it'll be, it's going to be an older school bike for me that I'll be on most of the time this summer, I hope. But anyway, right now, this is the bike. And uh, it had some some things I needed to, to, to take care of. So while I had it apart, I decided I'm gonna redo the finish on it because when I first put it together, it was a rattle can spray job, just black primer. You know, when I got it to the point where I could ride it and got it all squared away, just for shakedown purposes, coat it with something, get something on there. And uh, I've ridden it like that for the past few years or so. Now I've, I've, uh, I've done it with uh, a satin finish so it's still not I don't want the gloss I don't want shiny I don't want sparkly or anything like that on it uh, it's just a, a huge collection of overly priced parts um, with like bare bones rattle can paint job and that's the way I like it for this bike um, but we're not even here really here to talk about this bike. We're going to get into that in another video. We're here to talk about Rob's bike, Rob Sportster. His Sportster has had a charging problem for quite a while. He's been dealing with it. You know, these bikes, I mean, you can charge the battery up. If you've got a healthy battery, you can ride all day long. Ride all day long. Pretty much. With a bike that doesn't charge properly. But the next day, you're going to have a problem. And if you've got a bad stator or something like that, it can definitely feed back through the system and kill the battery as it just sits a lot faster than the battery is going to uh, leak down or discharge on its own accord if left sitting. So we're finally taking care of that. What his problem turns out to be, this is a 1989 Sportster. It's got a uh, big bore kit on it. Um, but it is one of the bikes that has the stator uh, operates in conjunction with the clutch basket, the back of the clutch hub the interior side of the, the reverse side of the clutch hub, the side that faces the inner primary case, has um, has magnets all the way around it, and it spins around the stator, and that's what generates some AC voltage. So if you're having problems, the whole gist of this freaking video 
you're having problems with your charging system on your motorcycle, uh, you can check them all basically the same way. You know, of course, the first thing you're going to do is throw a voltmeter across the battery and see what you got. And you should have some pretty healthy voltage. You should have 13 volts or 13.5, maybe even, you might even have 14 volts. Depends on the state of the battery, to tell you the truth, in, in many circumstances. But, uh, and a good healthy battery is going to be 12.6 volts or so. You know, a really good, really good solid battery. If you only have 12.4 or something, you go out and check it, that's okay. You know, but uh, like a brand new really good battery should be reading like 12.62 or so. Not running, just sitting there. So if you think you have a charging problem, you know, first thing you're going to do, you have the bike running and you're going to check across that battery. You know, positive and negative leads to a voltmeter. And you're going to look and see what you're, what you're charging. And you're looking for 14 volts, 13.5 or better, a little better maybe even. Now these systems put out a ton of voltage, AC voltage, but when it's rectified to DC voltage by the regulator, which is also a rectifier on this bike, it pulls it back down uh, and it ends up being whatever it is that your charging voltage is, you know, 13 something, 14, whatever it may be. So the fastest way for you to check it, if you find out it's the battery with it running that it's under suspicion and it seems battery voltage only, you know, that you don't have, the alternator doesn't seem to be putting anything out, then the fastest way to check it is to unplug the stator, to follow the harness coming from your, if you don't know where else to find it, follow the harness coming from your, your voltage regulator mounted in the front of the bike in the airstream. Follow that on back if you can. And somewhere back underneath there, uh, nearing the uh, transmission area, somewhere in there, you're going to find a plug. Uh, it should be a two-prong plug. Unplug it. Um, start the bike up at idle. And take your voltmeter. Set to AC voltage. Now, AC now. DC, previously AC now. And pin out the stator plug that's coming out of the engine. Put, uh, you know, you have two prongs, stick your, 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 your negative and your positive leads on those prongs. One on each prong. It's very simple. And look at what you got. Now, at idle, you should have probably, yeah, I don't know, <coughs> as much as 18 volts. You should have probably you know, it should be reading, uh, I don't know, over 12 volts, but as high as 18 volts. And for every 1,000 RPM, okay, this is sitting at idle. So now if you go to turn the, turn the throttle up a little bit, for every 1,000 RPM, it should double. It should, it should, well, not double, but read an additional 12 to 18 volts. So uh, if you, if you, turn it up to 2,000 RPM, then you're, you're probably going to be about 36 volts. These things put out a ton of voltage, but that's AC voltage. If that's going on, if you see in that, then stator is okay, the clutch basket is okay, uh, and you need to replace that regulator most likely. It's the regulator causing the problem. Replace the regulator. I mean, you could have a bad wire between said stator and regulator, but it's probably regulator, replace the regulator. If you don't have enough voltage coming out of that stator, then you're going to have to take the uh, primary cover off, pull the clutch basket out, and uh, the, uh, the engine sprocket, crank sprocket, pull it off as a unit with the chain, and lay it down front side or side that's out, lay that face down so you can see the back of it and you'll see all the magnets in there. Odds are one of the magnets, may, you may just have a bad stator, which is still going to be up there behind the clutch hub, still bolted to the inner primary. It's held on with four or so uh, little Allen head bolts, screws, they're not very big diameter wise. Um, but what you may have a bad stator alone. You're very lucky if that's what's up. But more than likely, because it's a known problem with these things, happens frequently, you may have one of the magnets have come loose. And you'll see that clearly. The magnet will be broken. 
There'll be pieces of it laying in there, debris. And when it breaks or comes loose, it hits the stator and it takes the stator out as well. So now you're going to need a clutch oven and a stator. So let me show you what's up with Rob's bike. And that way you can get a better look at it, a better understanding of it. All right, so here's Rob's bike. We have um, got the outer primary cover. The primary is pulled off. Now, I'm not going to go into detail and document how to do all of this. This is not difficult stuff. You need to get a manual. Get a manual. Get you a manual. They're invaluable. You'll need it again. Won't be the only time you'll ever be able to use it. This is the stator hanging here. You can see that the stator's melted right there. Uh, and that went over here like this. And it just bolted up on here with these little four screws went through here. Allen head screws. Okay, so the stator goes on there. Then the clutch basket goes on. Here's your clutch basket. Okay, here's your clutches. Are all in there. Clutch plates, drive plates. And then you flip it around on this side. See those magnets? See those magnets? This one's actually in pretty good shape. You have one magnet right there. See that magnet piece of it's broken off? One magnet right there that a piece of it's broken off. Pretty good size. The rest of them, and even that magnet, they're not really that messed up. What most likely appears to have happened is I don't know which happened first. Either that magnet got loose and, and you know, protruded a little too far so that it hit this somewhere. You can see clearly it's been hitting it right here. It hit it. And it usually wipes out the stator, but the stator's melted down anyway, so. Now maybe the stator became disfigured and that's why it hit it. Who knows, but it didn't hit them all, so I kind of doubt that. Anyway, that's our situation here. Um, this is a grommet that passes through. That's your wire. These wires are inside of the stator. This harness goes through the back of here and then where it unplugs is where you would check it out. All right, so that's about as simple as I can explain that. Uh, I wouldn't be afraid of it, but you're going to need a manual. And there are small differences in various years. Uh, later on, I'm not sure about these bikes, but I know on the big twins later on we have the uh, stator up here, and the magnets are up here, and it makes it uh, uh, probably a little bit cheaper, definitely cheaper than this. Because if you have to replace this, it's the whole basket, and that can be very, very pricey. Hundreds of dollars for that. And you got to transfer the clutches and all over. Anyway, that's the story with that. Uh, I got to get back over here. I'm painting uh, a few odds and ends that I have left for my bike, and um, I'm going to show you that in a different video. All right, you guys take care. Hope you're enjoying this weather. If you're experiencing any of this weather like we have here, and have a great day.